Hello and welcome to the 2020 Small Farm Conference here at Kentucky State University. My name is Joni Nelson and I manage the Center for Sustainability of Farms and Families at Kentucky State University. And we're going to go over the Small Scale Farm Grant today. I'm going to give a brief overview and then we're going to cut to the application and I'm going to go through the application with you to kind of help you fill it out. The Small Scale Farm Grant has six priority areas with funding limits of up to $5,000 at a time with a $10,000 lifetime max. The Farmer Education is $500 with a lifetime max of $500. We have Aquaculture, Food Insecure, Value Added, Certified Organic, and Agroforestry. In order to be eligible for the Small Scale Farm Grant, you have to be a Kentucky farmer with sales between $1,000 and $250,000. You also uh, can't be a startup, so you have to actually have already been farming. So if you're looking for organic, agri uh, organic certification or to improve your marketability, you're looking to get a piece of equipment to do value added processing or something like that, all that fits underneath the Small Scale Farm Grant. And then we have the Farmer Education Grant, which the Farmer Education Grant can pay for workshops, conferences, online trainings, reference materials, and it can pay your mileage up to 41 cents per mile to actually go to a conference. We've had a lot of conferences this time, during this time, during COVID, online, so we can actually pay for a lot of those online trainings through this small scale farm grant. The $500 um, is, like I said, it's a lifetime max. You can get up to $500. You don't have to use it all at the same time. Um, it's pretty easy to apply for this, this particular part of the grant. And you don't have to have sales behind you. If you're getting into farming, if you're just into farming, you, you want to start farming, you can use the Farm Education Assistance Grant um, for workshops and trainings like that. So under aquaculture, some of the items that we've uh, gotten in the past is like cold storage, scenes, aerators, you know, plumbing materials, uh, feeders, tanks, high tunnels. Um, now you can't get any fish, no research projects, no inputs, and no tractors on this. And that pretty much goes across the board with all of the different categories. Aquaculture, like I said, we've done some of these scenes before. Uh, this is a project with a bluegrass shrimp company. They got some scales and they also got some of the big totes that you actually, the plastic containers that you put the fish in to grow them out in aquaculture or aquaponics. The next category we're gonna talk about is food insecure. Under this category, you can cover production related equipment when it, uh, when it involves small ruminants, poultry, eggs, you know, rabbits, things like that. You can also do cold storage, um, but you have to sell or produce in one of the 77 eligible counties. So if you're producing um, animals in uh, one of the 77 counties, so you can see from this map right here, all the ones in the 10 color is a food insecure county county and so you either have to produce or sell into one of these counties in order to um, uh, apply under the food insecure category to, to qualify for that category <clears throat> Some of the things that we've done, like I said, we've done some of these um, uh, hoof equipment to, to manage your sheep and goats. Uh, we've also done some kidding pens. We've done some brooders, um, some commercial kitchens, uh, feeders, things like that under this food into your category. But you, again, I'll have to say you have to sell into one of those categories. You can't be selling at a stock show or something like that. The food has to go into um, the food system in Kentucky. Under the value added category, we've done a lot of equipment to change the physical state of of the products like milk to cheese or um, milk to soap or lotions. We've done freeze dryers, dehydrators, commercial kitchen, washing and packing equipment. Again, no production related equipment under here, no livestock and no tractors. Um, some of the things that we've done is some sorghum pans, we've done some freezers, we've done some display um, items for the <coughs> for uh, farm stands. Um, we've done coolers also to package meat in, along with, like I said, the freeze dryers and uh, dehydrators for um, changing the physical state of the product that you're working with. The next category is organic. So you either have to be certified organic, 
exempt or in transition. So you can get a document from the KDA on whether you're certified or exempt, but as for in transition, we asked for you to work with uh, one of the, the Organic Associations of Kentucky transition trainers, and then they can send us a document saying that you're in transition, and they can help you uh, fill out the paperwork, they can help you come up with a farm plan, they can help in all kinds of ways, and that's the Organic Associations of Kentucky Oak um, can help with that. So if you are uh, organic, then you can get production related equipment. So these are, these are like things that you can attach to some of your walk behind tractors. Now not the walk behind tractor, but the attachments for it, the implements, the broad forks, you know, things like that. Waterers and feeders, um, irrigation supplies um, in some cases as well hand tools we've done a lot of hand tools under this the jang cedar is one of the things that they really really enjoy um getting and they we funded a lot of those along with uh, some uh paper pot transplanters as well <clears throat> so this is like i said this is the jang cedar we've done cold storage under this too so this is a cold storage uh cool bot system that one of our farmers has gotten and then we've done some stuff with some chickens and we've done some of the bars for the low tunnels um as well <clears throat> The last category that I'm going to talk about is agroforestry. Um, so this is the intentional uh, integration of trees and shrubs into the crop and animal systems. So this is, uh, think um, of something that you're growing under the trees, not the timber itself, not the trees itself. But if you're getting sap from those trees, you can fit under this category. If you're doing apiculture or some kind of small ruminants through the trees and you're managing the trees and the small ruminants at the same time, then that can fit underneath this. And like I said, the tree nut sap production, it could be maple syrup, it could be, you could be doing black walnuts, you know, ginseng, uh, mushrooms, different things like that, all fit underneath this category. We've been able to reach so many small scale farmers over the course of the small scale farm grant since we were awarded from the Kentucky Agriculture Development Board in 2012. Uh, you can see from this map, this is our overall awards and kind of where some of the funding has been spent. So just to kind of go over a few things, applications are due the first of every month. You can't use, you can't get any replaceable item. So if it can't be there at the end of the grant, then you can't buy it with the, the funds from this grant. Um, so no jars, no labels, no lids, no, you know, nothing consumable, nothing that will not be there at the end of the grant. No startups, and you must have the supplemental questionnaire um, along with your application because that tells us what category that you're applying for, and we have certain funding limits per category. So now we're going to take a look at the uh, small scale farm grant and the website. So if you type in that website, this is where it brings you to to begin with. But as you can see from here, you can scroll down and depending on what application that you're going to fill out, you'll click on either the small scale farm grant and you can fill this out online. We're going to go through this here in just a minute. And then you can click on whatever supplemental that you need. So depending on what category that you are going to apply in will depend on which supplemental that you fill out. So we're going to start now with going over the small scale farm grant. So we're going to click on that and it's going to bring it up and it's going to pull up the application. Now you can either download the application onto your computer or you can type it in on here and you can fill it out via the internet or you can even write in it um, either way. And then you can email that back to um, Allison and myself. So I'm just going to go through here. Now you can see here, it kind of gives you a little overview, which I kind of just went over a little bit of the different categories <clears throat> and some of the frequently asked questions, you know, that I, that I get a lot. But right here, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through and we're just, we're just going to fill this out as if we're a farmer. So, you know, my name is John Doe. <clears throat> And I'm the contact person for this, so I could put my, the same name there, you know. 
we could put my name there, either one. Um, and then my mailing address, I'm just going to put in here, you know, 400 East Main, which is Kentucky State University's. You'll put your town, you know, your city and your county. And the county is very important because a lot of times um, that kind of tells us um, if you can't get through funding through Kentucky State University, there's, there's so much more funding out there. And so the review committee will come together and we'll, um, we'll decide, okay, well, we can't fund this, but, you know, you can get funding here and funding here. So it won't be just a no if you're not approved. It's going to be more of a, hey, here's a better option for here and here's a better option for here um, as well. Okay, so after you type in your county, you're going to come down to this area that says farm address, if different from above. If your farm and your postal mail address is different, then that's where you put that um, that information there. So we'll just pretend like ours is not for now. And then down here, the preferred method of uh, communication, email, telephone, postal mail, whichever one you prefer, because that's how Allison and myself are going to contact you. And then you want to put your tax ID number. So if you're an LLC or something like that, you'll have your tax ID number or your social security number. You know, we'll just put like zeros in here for now. And then... Next is if you have your farm service number. So your farm number is something you get from the farm service agency. So if you don't have your number, say it's 39 or something like that. You know, if you don't have that number, you can go down to your farm service agency and they can help you uh, get that number. It doesn't matter if you're one acre or 10 acres, you can still get a farm number from them. <coughs> And so here, the next one is, how did you learn about this program? You could put Kentucky Women in Ag, or Joni, or Kevin, or Third Thursday, you know, anything like that, however you heard about the program. We like to know if we're reaching people and what the methods are that we're reaching people from. Um, and then down here next, you'll want to know if you're an individual, an association, or a nonprofit. The majority of you are going to be applying under an individual. Nonprofit would be something like our farm farmers market or an association would be like um, uh, CFA or Grow Appalachia or something like that. Um, but most of you are going to be individual. And so we're going to go down here and then we're going to say, hmm, what category do I fit under? So we're going to fit under the food insecure category um, under this one. So the next part of the application is the description of the project. And in this one, you can describe what you want to do, but you can also add additional sheets or pictures or things like that that you can send in with your application. Uh, the more extra information you can send in, sometimes the more it explains it to the committee that's reviewing these. So say you want to do some, add some chickens. You're already farming, you're doing vegetables, you know, something like that. So you're going to add chickens. So you need a chicken coop. Um, um, and then you need some uh, brooding pins. Maybe you need some electric fencing to go around, you know, the, the poultry netting to kind of go around to keep um, other animals out of the area. Um, maybe you need some waterers um, and, and uh, some feeders or something like that as well to go with these these chickens. Now we cannot buy the eggs, we can't buy the chicks, we can't buy the animals, you know, but this is kind of some of the things you know you want to do here. And say you're doing this and you want to add the description of um, uh, this is going to add value to my production that I already have, you know, something like that. Um, Maybe you're doing um, vegetables and you want to add eggs. You know, you, you've never done chickens before, so now you want to get into chickens. Or maybe you already have chickens and you want to expand. You would put in here, expand current, you know, chicken production with, you know, these items or, you know, something like that. So expand current chicken production. So that's kind of what you want to put there. And then underneath, I know that wasn't a whole lot of information, but... Um, the next thing that you want to do is you want to go down here and say your timeline. So you have about a year to finish the project. The sooner you finish, the better and the, the sooner that you can actually apply for more funding. Um, so say you apply in January. So it's going to be January 2021 to, you know, January 2022. Um, we typically like to do it in about six months. So if you wanted to do, you know, six months, that's fine too. If you wanted to do your time date, three months. It's just you 
you don't want your project timeline to start until after um, you've applied for the grant. So if you apply for the grant in August, you, your timeline's probably going to start, you know, towards the end of August or, you know, the first of September or something like that. Um, and then here is, like I said, you've got to be between $1,000 and $250,000, so that would be a yes. Um, and then uh, is your gross income less than $23,000? A lot of these are a lot of survey questions, so we like to collect a lot of data at universities. So a lot of these is this. Um, and then if you've ever received a grant before, um, you're going to kind of know um, if you've received education funds or not. Um, and then whether you were approved or not. And then this is how long you've been farming. So have you been farming less than a year? Are you over a year? Are you more than 10 years? So you click that box. <clears throat> And then if you keep records of your farming enterprises, and if you don't, um, we have lots of uh, different venues and different ways out there to kind of help you and teach you how to uh, keep proper records of your farming uh, enterprises. Um, if you don't have a business plan, so you, you can click well, yes or no here, it's not going to hurt you. But if you don't, we can also connect you with the Kentucky Center for Agriculture and Rural Development, and they do a free business plan for you. If you're farming, you want to make sure that you have an, an agriculture water quality plan. So that's the ag water quality plan. If you do not have one of these, please go to your conservation office and um, your local conservation office and obtain one of these. It doesn't take very long whatsoever. Uh, I think in some cases you can even do this uh, online and then send it down there to them. Um, if, is this a new enterprise for you? Hey, we're adding chickens. So yes, the chicken part is a new enterprise for me um, but if you're expanding your chicken coop then no it's not a new enterprise for you and then have you received the Kentucky Agriculture Development funds before cost your funds and that is your CAPE program I know a lot of you may have heard of that program so that would be a yes or a no if you still don't understand if you have or not you can feel free to contact me on any of these questions and I can kind of go over it for you um, the next question is another survey question on you know have you produced uh, tobacco before. Um, the next question is, did you file a Schedule C or an F with IRS? And if it's a no, we, we kind of want to know why. Why didn't you file that Schedule C or Schedule F? And we've had some people say, well, I didn't have any farm income last year, but I can show I have income over the past three years because, you know, we flooded out last year and we just, we didn't make a profit. We didn't, you know, we didn't have anything. Um, and then how much of your income, and you can use these calculations here to kind of figure that out. Um, what other programs are you affiliated with? Um, this could be, so we'll click on Kentucky Proud. So we're Kentucky Proud, we go to the farmer's market, um, we work, you know, we work with the, the organic program also. Um, and then of course this one, you know, you have to click this one, Kentucky Women in Agriculture, right? That's what that one is. Um, and then some of the KSU programs, like are you part of the third Thursday thing, the fourth Wednesday beef uh, workshops that we're doing, different things like that as well. Um, and then how are you going to keep the success, oops, uh, records of your success? Um, this is, you know, receipts, amount of, um, so you could click in here and you could type in uh, receipts. And then we're also going to keep, um, records of increased um, CSA members. I can't spell today, sorry. Um, increased CSA members. Um, uh, sales records, I guess, would be a good one. Um, different things like that, kind of how you're going to show your success. Um, uh, as far as us, you know, with the with a small scale farm grant, when you do re, re, your reports, which the next one is who will complete the re required reporting. Um, this would be you, or if you, you know, you have someone else to help you, um, that would be fine too. Uh, the reporting is every three every three months, so we ask for um, a report on how pro how you're making your progress and things like that. Um, the next thing is where items will be sold. Um, if you're applying under the Food Insecure, you want to make sure that, you know, say Frank, put Franklin County here. So we'll type in Franklin County. That is a Food Insecure County. Or um, Jefferson County. 
You know, if it's more than one, that's fine too. And if you sell in counties that are not food insecure, put those down there too, you know, Bull County, you know, something like that. We can do that as well. <coughs> What do you hope to get out of this project? Um, you could also put increased sales on this one. So you could put down increased sales. Um, uh, so we're, we're doing chickens, um, better knowledge of chicken production, you know. Something like that um, would work well under this, uh, this question. How will you measure and track the benefits of the project? So this is not just like within two months, within three months, within a year, six months, you know, uh, two years, things like that. So on down the road, how are you going to know that this piece of equipment that you got or these chickens that you added to your production are, are really worth, you know, what it is? So you could do um, how are you going to measure it? So you're going to measure it on um, how much... Uh, how many more chickens you have produced, you know, so the amount of uh, chickens that you've produced or, um, you know, photos is another good way to kind of show your progress um, as well. Maybe you're now doing training with other farmers uh, as well in here. So that would be a good one to put there. And then that kind of leads into the next questions. Who other than yourself and your direct customers will benefit from this project? Maybe you're going to do a farm tour with a local 4-H to come out and show them how to raise chickens. So that something like that would, um, would work with that underneath there. See if I can get this in there. So, so that works there. And then, uh, what are your sales projections from this project? Is next. So, what we're going to put here is um, you can you can actually you can you know put it out like we're going to sell you know ten dozen eggs for two dollars each and put that out if you wanted to. Or you could say something like uh, sales increase by ten percent. You know. So either one of those um, work, but you want to make sure that you have accurate numbers in here. Um, uh, and it, it's actually, you know, legitimate numbers. It's not just kind of a guess like I just did. Um, so, and then the next, the next question is, how will others learn from your experience? So how are they going to learn? Are you going to do a YouTube video? You know, maybe you put that, maybe we're going to do a YouTube video. Maybe we're going to do um, a field day on our farm, things like that as well. And then, are you willing to share pictures or give tours of the projects? Um, this needs to be yes, <clears throat> so we'll just go ahead and click that as, as, as a yes. Um, and then the next one is um, list all state or federal and local laws that you're aware of to produce and sell. So there's egg laws out there. There's egg handling laws out there. There's, um, you know, different laws that you have to abide by in order to produce eggs, in order to um, sell the chickens if you want to do this, the chickens and incubators, you know, things like that. Um, there's also rules and regulations when it comes to value-added products. So maybe you need a commercial license to sell your product. Maybe you need a home-based license. Maybe you need a um, um, uh, micro-base, you know, uh, micro-sales license or something like that. So any of those, um, you want to put that here. If you're making cheese, you know, you have to be inspected, um, different things like that. So any rules or regulations that you know of, um, put that here. If you're doing meat, you know, USDA, it has to be, you know, processing USDA facility, things like that. That's what you want to put here. And I'm not going to go, I'm not going to top all that in right there because it would take me forever. Ever. Um, so then the next thing that we want to get down here to is the budget. Now, the worst thing you can do on your budget is put chicken coop $5,000. Chicken coop $5,000. Now I don't know what you what you're going to need with that. Now if you're buying a pre-designed chicken coop, then you put chicken coop five thousand dollars and you have a quote, then that's fine. But what you want to do is you want to price this out. So we'll go ahead and back out of that there, <clears throat> and we're going to put in here. I wish I knew some of the prices better. Um, uh, 
chicken uh, bird nest, you know, like the, the nesting boxes, like the, the bird box. And maybe those are $259 each. I know, I'm just throwing some stuff out here. And then the explanation is this, for this is um, uh, for the chickens to lay eggs, place for the chickens to lay eggs, you know, something like that. And then, as you can see at the bottom, it kind of starts tallying. Um, and then next, we're going to buy um, chicken waters. Um, and we're going to do, you know, 10. So we're going to say uh, they're $15, you know, times 10. And then we're going to put that, you know, put that there. $150 waters for the chickens. So you can kind of see as it's totaling up down here. Now, what you want to do with this is... You want to put the amount at the bottom down here, here, you know, you want to put that amount up here under amount requested. So right now we're only requesting $409, which is fine. You don't have to request the full $5,000 at a time. Um, you know, if that's all you need, then that's all you need. Um, and then if we come down on the bottom part, uh, down here, now here's the part where you don't have to have matching funds, but we need to see some kind of input from you. We want to see that you have skin in the game. So down here, you're going to put like feed. Maybe a bag of feed is $20 each and you got 10 chickens, you know, so $200 in feed. Um, you know, to, to feed the chickens. Uh, maybe you're going to uh, buy a... Um, um, you know, the vet bills or, you know, things like that, or maybe the processing fees when you process the chickens um, may also work. Yeah, we'll put that down there. That'd be better. The processing fees, how, you know, however much it costs to process, you know, the chickens. Um, kind of put that down there, and that kind of shows that you have skin in the game. So then on this next page down here, what we're going to do is we're going to say your funds for the project. So you see up there it was $409. So we'll put that there. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. Um, so we'll put the your funds for the project is 550, and um, my funds for the projects. What you want from us is the 409. See, it's okay if you mess up. You can always go back and erase. And then also, you know, with a grant application, if you have any questions, you can always give me a call, and I can kind of help you go through it as well. Um, the bottom down here is it's going to say what else you, will you pro be providing. So you're going to do the labor. You know, we're going to do the markets, a record keeping, uh, transportation of crops or animals. You know, either way. Um, uh, daily management equipment so so you can just click down here what all you're going to apply and then you're going to sign it now you can digitally sign this um, in a lot of cases um, and send it to me or you can sign it um, either way uh, you can you know sign it by hand and scan it in your local extension office is a good place or your library to get these sometimes if you don't have a printer at home to get them printed out and then scan back in and email to us you can snail mail them too um, it's a little it's getting a lot better we had some trouble in the beginning uh, getting snail mail but we're you know during COVID but we're, we're getting better at it now and you also want to see this so quotes are required for the requested budget items if you have quotes then that's really going to help your project an Etsy cart an Amazon cart anything like that will work for a quote if you're you know having uh, cold storage installed and you need an electrician and you want to pay uh, the labor for that certified electrician not your neighbor or friend down the road um, but that certified you know plumber or electrician then you can get a quote from them and send that in with it um, you also want to make sure that you have your supplemental category survey completed so at this time I'm going to go back and kind of show you the supplemental category as you can see here we're back out at the main small scale farm grant page we're going to go down here, and since we decided that we're going to be food insecure, we're going to fill out the food insecure area production supplemental application. So what you're going to do is you're going to click right here, and so you'll see it's going to pop up here with several questions. Um, are you certified naturally grown? Do you have a good agriculture water, you know, uh, practices uh, certified? Are you GAP certified? Animal welfare? We're Kentucky proud, you know, um, different things like this. Do you participate in any 
uh, school programs, any farm to, to school programs? Do you have the local school kids come out, you know, and uh, visit your farms? Uh, do you, are you licensed to accept EBT? Now, in some cases, um, people have checked this, um, and they may not be licensed, but they can still provide EBT and SNAP benefit products through their farmer's market. And that's okay, too, because you can always write out here, you know, farmer's market or something like that as well. <clears throat> and then, you know, are you, um, you know, can you, or do you participate in SNAP at FNAT, educational programs with schools, after school programs, backpack programs, or any other programs that you have offered on your farm? You know, maybe you have um, a homeschool program come in. You know, that's not really listed here, but you can list the homeschool program that you have that, that comes in. And, you know, maybe you have a 4 H person or an FFA person that comes out and um, ch helps check the chickens or things like that. So that's where you would add here. Um, as well. So that's a supplemental uh, grant application and the application too. So if you have any questions, you can email me um, at joni.nelson at kysu.edu or you can email Kevin. Uh, you can also email Allison. Her email is on the uh, application. You'll be sending your applications to her. Um, and remember, October 1st, December 1st, February 1st, those are the next three deadlines that are coming up. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, if you have an application you want me to look over, feel free to send it to me and I can, you know, me or Kevin can kind of look over it. The further out the application deadline that you send it to me, the better chances that I'm going to get to your application and get it um, back to you before the deadline. Um, I get a lot of applications. We average between 50 and 70 um, per time. So it's two of us going over that many applications. Um, so the sooner you get it to me, um, the better I, you know, I can kind of help you. And if we're not ready to apply during this, you know, the next time then we'll get it ready for the, you know for the next one it's okay and you don't have to apply for everything at the same time um, either you can do it in just little bits and pieces as you need it um, also and like I said please feel free to reach out thank you and have a wonderful day